Hello, my name is Mike Aben and welcome to my KSP campaign. We are back after a six month hiatus with this series as I worked on my other series. I decided to put that series on hold for a little bit, come back to this and finish this off. Now I'd already made the decision last summer that this series was into its final episodes. I wanted to wrap up the missions that were already in place. And I figure that's still going to take me another five or six episodes. That's just a guess at this point. I've not played it, so I don't really know. In fact, I haven't played this uh, game in over six months, so it might still be a while yet. But in this episode, what we're going to be doing, well, I guess the main theme in this episode is going to be improving upon Yoy Station, which, if you might recall, is my asteroid-based station that is in orbit about the moon, and we're going to increase its size by, well, adding on another asteroid, sort of uh, playing Tinker Toys in space is the way I'm sort of thinking about it. But we got a lot of other things to do in the meantime, a lot of hopping between different missions. I mean, really, what else is new in this series? And uh, we're starting off here with the Korion 1, which is still a couple of days away with its from its rendezvous with the defunct Minmus Driller 2. It's got to incite some repairs and put in some fuel into it. And in order to accomplish that, what I need to do is to make an inclination change. So we're out here at our furthest reach out from Kerbin, getting ready to make a 55 meter per second burn in order to change our inclination. You always want to make these types of burns far away from the parent body. The Korion 1, you may recall, is sort of my uh, Kerbin system runabout, one of two Kerbin system runabouts I have. This one definitely being the older of the two and sort of a workhorse for me and working is what it's doing right now. All right, that's the berm. We'll use a little RCS to kind of fine tune this encounter. Okay, so there we go. And we will be rendezvousing with Minmus Driller 2 once we get back down to our closest approach to Kerbin, which will be happening a little bit later in this episode. But, uh, well, we've got a couple of other things to check in on first. Number one is the Arm E. Uh, this is two days from its rendezvous with a D-class asteroid, a contract I have had hanging over my head for gosh knows how long. <laughs> I'm completely losing track of this one. But, uh, yeah, you might be seeing here this thing is dead in space. Yep, it is. And what's wrong with this? Well, it's the antenna. That's the problem. You can see here that the range of this antenna is 90 megameters. But the distance to Interplanetary Relay 2 is 157 megameters. And as I time warp, it's only getting further away. So, uh, yeah, we're not regaining control of this thing. This thing is now, well, a permanent orbiting fixture going around the sun. Oh, well, I did push another one of these into the building queue. But that is going to take a little while, thanks to Kerbal Construction Time, it'll take a little while to build. So, in the meantime, onward to other things. This here is the Moho 2, which you saw me insert into orbit about Moho last episode. But I'm just here sort of tweaking the orbit a little bit, trying to get something that's, I don't know, halfway decent. Let's see here. That's about 500 kilometers by 950 kilometers. Uh, yeah, well, I'll keep tweaking this. But in the meantime, I can probably do one of the contracts here. Let's do an orbital survey. Now we got a 32 second light delay, so we can just time warp that away. We got a few more seconds here. Four, three, two, one. And there. Oh, and now it's got to perform the survey, okay? Yeah, I won't show you the further tweaking of this orbit. I would like to get it down to a 500 by 500 orbit. Okay, there we go. Okay, that's 70 science. Uh, but the contract hasn't gone green yet. Okay, have to perform a survey for ore. Is there something I'm missing here? I thought that's what I did. Oh, oh, hang on. 
Oh, it just went green. Okay, so there, that contract is done. You can see here, I do have a couple of other contracts. I got a communication contract. That's 70% of 95% complete. Uh, I need another satellite to get the 100% coverage, but that's still coming. And I got a ScanSat contract. It's only 1% of 95% complete to do a high uh, res altimeter scan. Here we go, now we're on Moho. You can see the low res scan underneath there. And all oh, these little strips of blue. That's the high res part. Oh, that's gonna take a while to get all of that. So uh, we'll leave the Moho 2 to do its job for now. And we'll go back into the Kerbin system, take a look at the KSC where, well, I think a fairly major event is going on here. I'm going to spend the 844,500 curb bucks to upgrade the administrative building or more properly start the process of upgrading. Again, because of curb construction time, this will take a little while. But once this is complete, well, that will be all of the KSC, all up to Tier 3. I think a bit of a milestone. But with that out of the way, why don't we get ourselves back to the Karayan 1 and its rendezvous with Minmus Driller 2. Well, Valentina is just about ready to start her docking procedure here. Start flipping the Karine around. And you can see as well along for the ride we have our engineer Gene Lee and our scientist McNand. And just to remind people in case you've forgotten how, why the mission for Minmus Driller 2 is in the need of some support and frankly like I'm surprised if anybody remembers, given it was so long ago that this actually occurred. But the position of these Rocco Max engines was, well, rather poorly placed because the drills below there were blocking the exhaust gases. Even worse, they were blocking them asymmetrically. So I had a lot of trouble holding on to my vector as I was performing the burn to go out to Minmus and wasting a whole lot of fuel. And the net result was that this thing didn't have enough fuel after performing its Minmus injection burn. So what I ended up doing was changing its orbit so that it wouldn't cost hopefully too much to get a Minmus encounter, but at the same time, uh, I didn't want to risk having a Minmus encounter happen accidentally while we set up a mission to go and put some fuel into it. Or a moon encounter, actually. Uh, that was probably more likely. Uh, that's why I had that wacky inclination that you saw me making that inclination change earlier in this episode. But now that the Karine is here and docked, we can start transferring over some fuel. This is a bit of guesswork here, I will admit, but I think, I think that should be enough fuel and still leave the Karine with enough fuel that it can maneuver itself back to Kerbin Station. And with that complete, we'll get Gene Lee out here to see if we can fix the issue with the Rocco Max engines. I'm sort of using the lines on this adapter plate to kind of help me ensure that the engines remain symmetrical, but I just want to move them around so that the drills don't end up interfering as much as they do. Hopefully I've moved these enough. Gene Lee here is just doing a final survey. Yeah, I think this should work. But unfortunately it's going to be a little while because, well, after the Karayan undocked, I started thinking about what my, you know, plotting a Minmus encounter. It turned out that encounter wasn't going to be for another 70 days. So clearly that's going to have to be well, for some episode in the future. In the meantime, though, we have better things to get on to. This, uh, well, rather dorky-looking vessel is on its way to Yoi Station in orbit about the moon. I mentioned earlier in this episode, the main thing I want to do this episode is connect a couple of asteroids together, kind of play some space tinker toys, and this thing is going to be the connector. And it's not a very heavy payload, but it is kind of an awkwardly shaped payload, hence the reason why I got a very small rocket, but with a rather large fairing in comparison. Yeah, kind of reminds me a bit of a Katamari Damachi character, actually. Anyway, uh, so, 
got around doing the Mooner injection, which should have been a completely routine thing. I mean, that's one of the most routine and common things I've done in this series is made my way orbit to the moon and rendezvoused with things around the moon, but I don't know. I don't know if I can make any more excuses. I mean, I did play this six months ago. I'm doing the commentary now six months afterwards. So what was actually going through my head, I, I, I don't I don't know anymore. Maybe maybe I was just tired, but I mean I should have waited about an extra day or so so that when I went to do my injection, my trajectory in towards the moon would have been in the plane of Yoy Station's polar orbit about the moon. But then I began to compound that particular mistake. For instance, when it came around to the proper time for me to perform my correction, oh, uh, well, I forgot to raise my antenna while I was in low orbit about Kerbin, so that ends up meaning that I have no communication, and because of remote tech, this probe is now dead. So I had to wait until I got close enough to the moon in order to pick up a relay signal from the moon and then I compounded that mistake even further by burning south when I should have been burning northwards not really paying attention to which way around Yoy Station was going around the moon and ended up in this orbit with an inclination difference of 122 degrees from Yoy Station. Now, I left my apoapsis up pretty high to facilitate a cheaper um, inclination change, but uh, the 337 meters per second I now had left in the vehicle was only enough to get the inclination down to about 16 degrees, and certainly not enough to make any kind of a rendezvous. But thankfully, well, help wasn't too far away. Burke and Wilman, who are on Yoy Station, were just looking for something to do, and this will suit nicely. Yeah, they've been sitting here on Yoy Station in orbit about the moon. Oh, God, seemingly forever. They're waiting for resources coming from a harvester that's sitting on the moon's surface. That reminds me, actually. I haven't checked in on that for a while. <laughs> it might be done its job. I'll have to make sure to check in on that next episode. But uh, meanwhile, they're just, well, they're, they've been bored out of their skulls waiting. So this will be just perfect for them. One kind of weird thing. I had a note in my, uh, my game notes. I make game notes as I'm playing that the WASD keys weren't working and I was blaming the mole mod on this one because I have a mole command module and I've had issues with the mole mod and funny things happening in the past. So you'll see me as I'm doing all these maneuvers I'm just going to keep using the autopilot buttons because the, uh, uh, the WASD doesn't work. But I'm not too convinced it was mole's fault. <laughs> I'll have to get back to this again. This was a while ago. From a role-playing perspective, I think we'll just call this a software glitch. So I'm just burning prograde here. I'm just raising my apoapsis so that I can make my inclination change more cheaply. Not worrying about the rendezvous just yet. Okay, apoapsis is three hours away. That'll do. We'll put a maneuver out here on the ascending node. And I'm not worrying about getting the rendezvous. All I want to do is get my inclination down to zero. Now once out there towards the maneuver, uh, I can't snap to the... Remember, I don't have WASD, so I can't move it onto the node icon. All I can do is just snap it to anti-normal with the autopilot and just kind of hope for the best. So the no maneuver note's not really doing anything. I'm just really kind of eyeballing this right now. Oh, that looks pretty good. Let's get rid of the node here. What are we at? Oh, negative 0.4 degrees. Okay, let's put on some RCS, see if we can make this a little better. 0.3. Oh, we're back. Okay. Uh, okay, that's as close as we're going to get. But that way, but that's pretty good. And it turned out just a teeny tiny little burn in about a day and a half. Got me my encounter. Okay, smidge more here. All right, we can get rid of the node. Maybe a little RCS here. Get it in here a little closer. Let's select the node here, there we go. Yeah, oh, no, come back. Oh, screw it, that's close enough. And then it was just one more orbit for us to get our encounter. Now, without having WASD, uh, yeah, this was going to be interesting. 
I'm just burning retrograde here just to knock off relative velocity. Okay, the encounter distance is now increasing. Okay, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to hit positive normal, start drifting that direction a little bit. SAS, so we'll stop there. And we'll try that. Oh, that's working. That's bringing the encounter distance down. And basically, that's the way I proceeded. Um, just using the autopilot buttons to get it to drift in the direction that I thought would work, and then pressing SAS to get it to stop. And yeah, it was a little tedious, but a completely doable workaround to get my attitude to be whatever I wanted. Okay, now, how am I going to align these docking ports? Okay, we'll control from here, obviously. And then we'll just point prograde relative to the target. That should swing us around, at least get us pointing in rel they're close to the right direction. I'm really kind of eager to get back to this ship. <laughs> and really take a look if this is a real problem or just some sort of, I don't know, something I can, of, uh... That something I just did something dumb and thought I didn't have WASD. I don't know. It just seems like a weird problem to have now that I'm looking at it. Okay, we'll use RCS and we'll move our prograde vector right onto the target icon. There, that looks that looks pretty good. There, we'll keep it pointed in this direction. We'll just switch over to uh, our target. And we will select the Karayan 3. There we go, ships, Karayan 3, there we go. And then we'll point our docking port. Where's our docking port here? There it is. Okay, control from here. It actually, I think it is already pointed in the... Yep, it's pointed in the right direction. Okay, and then we'll go back to here and take a look at our... Do oh, gosh, that's close enough. <laughs> We're all lined up just fine. This isn't going to be difficult at all. And once we're docked, I'm not going to do any fuel transferring here. The Karan can just carry this thing. That'll be the simplest thing to do, rather than to deal with two vehicles at the same time. And of course, getting back to the station was just the same process you just saw me do. So we'll just cut to the chase. But, uh, you know, the docking is, not, is going to be a little bit more interesting, lining things up, that's for sure. Now I'm deliberately going above the target here. I think I should be cutting my velocity. Yeah. Okay, here we go. About a meter per second. Now I'm going above the target because I want to attach this thing to the asteroid. And the connector does not have any RCS. I was always planning on using the Karayan here to uh, do all this work. Okay, so we'll arm that claw. We'll try and rotate this around into a good position. Oh, wait, we can uh, control from the claw. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't know you could do that. Okay, that's better. So we're now controlling from the claw. So we'll aim towards the target icon on the nav ball. Okay, the prograde vector is not in the right place. So we'll try and pull that prograde vector over towards the target icon. Oh, oh that's the wrong way. Back this way. There we go. Okay, that has us going the right way. Oh, we should uh, really target the center of mass here. <laughs> Let's target the center of mass of the asteroid. Okay, there we go. And why don't we focus our camera on the claw itself? That should help. This vehicle's long enough as it is. Come on, there we go. Alrighty, and I think I'm going to have to do this largely by eyeball. Not exactly a typical pairing of vehicles here but I want you to see it so I'm gonna step up the playback speed so that you don't have to uh, endure it for too long but I do want you to see it closing in on the asteroid here actually the distance indicator to the asteroid is not exact well right now it's not even visible let alone particularly useful. I see a sort of, well the lights from the Karayans beginning to light up the asteroid. I see a sort of a bump there on the right of the asteroid. I'm going to try and put it onto there. I think that'll work fairly well. 
need to come a little bit more this way, a little bit more to the right. Right, 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 right. There we go, there we go. And down a bit. There we are. And grabbed! Awesome! Okay, so the little transfer vehicle attached to the connector, that detaches. And we'll deorbit that into the moon's surface to get rid of it. And oh, geez, it only has 25 meters per second left in it. That's not enough to deorbit it. But not a problem. We just happen to have an ample supply of KIS explosives aboard. Because nothing says safety in space as large quantities of C4. Oh, get your distance here, Wilman. <laughs> Boom. Okay, well, we have one more piece to our little construction project. Forming this burn is the Arm B, which has been waiting patiently in orbit with its A class asteroid, just waiting for the appropriate hardware to be delivered to Yoi Station. This rendezvous was really easy because I had already done all the inclinations and had the periapsis right and all that kind of stuff and just was sitting here waiting in this kind of parking orbit, just waiting for the right time to come. Well, the time is now. I tell you, this RMB, this is its, it's brought both of the two asteroids you see here into moon orbit. Uh, so it's been, uh, it's a fairly old vessel, but it has been working well for me. And I got to tell you, things have got to be pretty awkward. That mission control between the Arm B team and the Arm E team, which you saw dead in space orbiting the sun at the beginning of this episode. And I mean, that was the third vessel they've lost in their attempts to finish off the D-Class asteroid contract. Meanwhile, Arm B here, this isn't for a contract or anything. Arm B is just screwing around. <laughs> They're just having fun here. They're just like, oh, we got two asteroids. Let's put them into moon orbit and see if we can join them together. That'd be fun. Arm E, how are you guys doing with that uh, put an asteroid in Kerbin orbit contract? <laughs> This is some uh, dirty stairs going back and forth, that's for sure, in the cafeteria, I think. And that's despite the Arm E having better technology, too. I mean, this is Arm B, you know, the Arm B team's just like, uh, yeah, your fancy Hydrolox nuclear engines, uh, you know, we'll just go with good old-fashioned chemical technology, thank you very much. I can't target the grabber, so I am just doing this again by eyeball. Oh, I like where the center of mass is. <laughs> the center of mass between, you know, the, the, the station proper, the asteroid, and the Korion. It's uh, well out <laughs> in the middle of the void. Here, we'll uh, double up on the playback speed once again. Get this happening more quickly. And just keep adjusting the camera to try and sort of give myself a good look at what is going on. Uh, there is a sort of bumpy part protruding on the A-class asteroid that the Arm B has. So that's the part I'm going to try and sort of stick on to the grabber. I think I got this lined up pretty well. I'll tell you though, the Arm B can sling around this asteroid like nothing. And there she is. A dumbbell in space. So we'll toggle off all of these reaction wheels. Don't want to induce any kind of wacky wobble in this conflagration, but uh, I don't know. I like it. <laughs> I think it looks pretty good. And we'll end all this with Shell Cal. He'll go out and he'll collect some science from our newly acquired asteroid. And that's it. This gets me all up to date. This was all of my summer KSP playing in this particular series. I've not played and done any missions beyond what you are seeing right now. So I'm not exactly sure what we'll be going on to next. But whatever it is, it's going to have to wait 
for the next episode. In the meantime, I thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again next time.